All right, this is a good place. I think we're gonna get started. And obviously before you get started, kind of evaluate where you're at. What are your goals? What are you trying to accomplish? And as you can see behind me, you can see behind me. That's part of the problem. <laughs> That's part of the problem. The habitat's poor, but we got some good things going for us. Our goal here is wildlife habitat. We're not as concerned with marketability of timber or timber quality. We've got some green briar, we've got some wild grape. While wild grape isn't good for the health of your timber if you're trying to get grow tall straight trees, grape, wild grape obviously is a great food source, especially for turkeys and rough grouse. So we're gonna encourage some wild grape, encourage some green briar, but as you can see the timber behind me, it's all the same age, it's all the same size, and we're going to, we're gonna cut a lot of these trees down. I'm gonna get sunlight, it's up there, down here to the forest floor where it cannot get to right now. So like I said, our goal here is wildlife, timber quality second. So we're gonna fire up the saw and cut some trees down. As you're going along, you should be aware of what's around you and evaluate really each tree that you're cutting, even if it slows the process down. Because we got a nice little patch of greenbriar right here. As you can see, it's, everyone's been nipped off by deer. I love to see greenbriar. It's a deer candy and obviously utilized by songbirds, berries by grouse on this part of the property. So here's a walnut behind us. A lot of people treat walnuts very sacredly because of their marketability and the, the value of the timber. But this tree is young. It's a long, long ways from being a log, even if we wanted to, but you can tell it's knotty, branchy. It's never gonna make a good log, even if we wanted to cut it. So this tree, this walnut is better off being cut, opening up a nice little hole for this green briar to get more sun, to propagate, feed more wildlife, provide more cover. Yeah, we're just going along being intentional with the trees that we're cutting, the decisions that we're making, and how each one um, is going to impact and benefit the wildlife that we're managing for. As you're going along, really pay attention and be intentional with the decisions that you're making in the trees that you're cutting. Don't just go out and whack and stack as fun as that might sound. It can be really counterproductive. Be really intentional with the decisions that you make. Like we cut these two locust trees, a couple poplars behind us, and in the process we're daylighting this big wildlife white oak tree that's got a nice crown, but these locust poplars are growing up alongside it out competing it for sunlight. However, we have a dogwood tree right below it, which the dogwood tree is not gonna grow as tall as a poplar. It's not gonna compete as directly with the white oak for sunlight. We're gonna leave this tree, even though it is competing a little bit. Think again for the food source for rough grouse, for songbirds, turkeys, the dogwood produces a beautiful bright red berry that is favored by all kinds of wildlife. It's also the state tree of Virginia. So it always gets a pass behind us. The trees that we cut, we don't want to always, we want to avoid an entire area of this. Like we don't want the entire area we're cutting to be a big brush pile because in essence, we're bringing the canopy from up in the air, 40, 50, 60 feet and bringing it down to the ground. And you're really just wasting, you're just relocating the canopy. However, little pockets of this is really beneficial. We'll clean up around it but in just cutting four or five trees right here this little brush pile can serve 
as a nesting opportunity for birds, habitat, home for a rabbit. And then finally, coming back to this white oak, again, a lot of times we're, we're managing for wildlife, not for timber. So we actually like to see grapevines. We like wild grapes for grouse, for turkeys. However, you can see this grapevine right here is pretty significant and growing up. And if we leave it unchecked, it could out choke that white oak and kill it. And that white oak's got a nice crown that could be a nice acorn producing tree. So we're just gonna cut that grapevine, which it'll stump sprout and uh, deer will browse the sprouts. But again, just be intentional with the decisions that you're making and you'll make the greatest benefit for all wildlife species. So again, really be intentional. Be deliberate with what you're cutting and the decisions that you're making. This black locust here, we're not cutting every single black locust because black locust is an important pollinator species uh, during the spring when it's flowering. However, when we're flush cutting these black locusts, we are treating them, treating the stumps with an herbicide because they'll stump sprout and the deer just a little bit around the cambiums, all it takes, the tree's dead. Blue marking helps you identify which trees have been treated and which haven't, but if I didn't treat this with herbicide, this tree would stump sprout. Uh, deer, they don't really, in my experience, favor the sprouts from a black locust, and this thing, with the hole in the canopy we've created, will send up shoots and saplings, probably five or six feet um, this growing season. So this tree is done, and again, we're just diversifying the decisions we're making to achieve the greatest possible result in the end. Got a question for you. I want an honest answer. Gotcha. Is it weird to be sad when winter is over? Growing up in the snow belt? Yeah, that is pretty weird. <laughs> I tell you what, I can understand. But this time of year, I, I love this time of year so yeah. much. I love this chainsaw work so much that mm -hmm. when winter is over and, and the days start to get warmer and longer, yeah. I get a little sad because I you do TSI all times of year, but you, yeah. you're lying if you're saying that it's not the most enjoyable this time of year. It really is. There's some romance to it. Yeah. This is my favorite type of management work, absolutely, yeah. is, is running a saw and, and the benefit Benefits that we accomplished today with just a little bit of work, they make such a big difference for wildlife. Letting that sunlight hit the forest floor, you know, we're, we're benefiting deer, obviously, turkeys, grouse. Every critter that calls our property home is thankful for the work that we did today. We don't, we don't think about things from under our feet. We're always thinking of the, the obvious things that we can see and, and the things that we concentrate on or we pursue, but uh, the response from cutting trees down for wildlife yeah. is just, it's remarkable. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, this part of the property, like we touched on, this is this is a deer bedding area. This is this is actually where the big boys live. Mm -hmm. But in letting more sunlight hit the forest floor, we're going to get you know those native forbs, grasses, wildflowers. Yep. That you know we're going to get some milkweed probably in here. There's a lot of snake root up here, which is a good late summer nectar source mm -hmm. for pollinators. So yeah, are the are the bucks, the deer, they're going to appreciate it absolutely. But like you said, insects, butterflies, everything is going to benefit from the work that we did today. And that's yeah. that's honestly what's most satisfying to me from running a chainsaw. Yeah, and that's the thing too, the more you learn, the more you tear down that ceiling, you know, the bees and the butterflies, yeah. you know, poplar, the locusts, don't, we used to go in there and just cut all that. Yeah. 
when actually you want to save pockets of that stuff too because sure. of the bees and the butterflies, especially the bees. Yeah, it's just, it's absolutely amazing what you can accomplish. This part of the property last summer, I mean, it was loaded with wing stem, which is one of my favorite mm -hmm. plants. Grows real tall, great umbrella plant for turkey poults or grouse chicks. Mm -hmm. I always see deer bedded in it. Beautiful yellow flowers. So when we're doing this work, in the winter, and especially here in a deer bedding area, you know, we're thinking, oh, I'd get downwind of it and shed hunt it and catch the buck coming in and out of it, which is, <laughs> honestly, that's part of what we're doing. It's, that's, that's a reason why, but like Eric said, you, the more you do, the more you learn, the more there is to be excited about. And, yeah. you know, that wing yes. stem, for example, is a plant that, you know, I, exactly, I'm excited to see how wildlife respond to that. But mm -hmm. now the work is never ending. It's always fun, always thankful for the opportunity to be able to do the work. Mm -hmm. And just as it is for you, it is for us. Wildlife, it's our way of life.